All right. Hey, um, this is, uh, Steve, the Vintari RC here, and uh, I get a lot of questions sometimes about how my laser cutter works. So I'm doing a little cutting out in the shop. Figured I'd uh, do a live video of it and uh, just show you how it works. So cutting some Baltic birch. This is eighth inch or actually three millimeter Baltic birch. Uh, and this is a Chinese uh, 60 watt laser, CO2 laser. Um, so it's, uh, it, it's uh, inexpensive, but it does a good job for what I do. So uh, anyway, I'll try to commentate a little bit as I go, but otherwise uh, we're going to watch this machine go. All right, so uh, the, the laser, it, it runs through mirrors and such. So the tube's actually along in the back and it bounces off a, a mirror to the side and then mirror to the, the uh, head, which moves around. And then there's a mirror that shows it down through a focus ring or a focus lens. And you need to set the focal length based on the distance from the material to there. Um, this spacer actually does that. So you just adjust the height of the bed so that the spacer fits in there really well. And that sets the focus. And then you want to set your orientation. The uh, red dot is just a positioning dot. And so I like to give myself just a little bit of overlap, bring it a little closer here. So I like to have just a little bit of overlap and then I will check to make sure it looks like it's parallel. See there, the dot ran off of it a bit. You could set this up with a jig, but when I'm just running one or two things, I don't bother. So I could still a little bit off. And there, and in my files, I always give myself just a little bit of overlap. So there, I've set the origin. And so we've set the focus, we set the material in place. This laser is running off some software, LaserWorks, RDWorks. So what we're doing is we're cutting a, uh, a glue caddy. There's a parts for a glue caddy here. Uh, the file's set up there, um, our speed, um, our power settings, that's the uh, percentage of the power of the, the maximum the power supply is going to output for this laser. Um, I've got it dialed in to where uh, 80 and 70 is my minim, maximum and minimum. And uh, speed is 18 millimeters a second is how fast the head's going to move while it's cutting. So we've uh, set the laser. There's other two, the two other parts for it is on the back of the laser here, we've got an exhaust fan, which is actually coming out the side here, goes into that fan and outside that actually pulls the fumes out. And there's an air assist. I've actually upgraded to this quiet compressor with a valve to control the on and off. And it gives you a more consistent than the, uh, the aquarium pump that basically came with this machine. Now, normally you would shut the lid for safety. I've got, uh, my safety glass is on. No one else is going to come in the shop. So I'll leave the lid open for you to watch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the exhaust fan. And then I'm going to turn on the air assist. Double check everything. Our power, our settings are good. And I'll hit start over on the software. And our laser will start moving. So again, this is running at... Uh, 18 millimeters a second. And it's just one style of cut on the whole job, so it'll do that the whole time around. Let's move you in a little bit closer, as long as I don't get in where the beam is, you can kind of give a little more detail how it's cutting. It's going to go around and cut the inside parts first. And you get a little bit of overburn on the top. The laser is really just vaporizing the wood. And so some of the sap and the glue leave a little bit of residue. If it's a real important piece that I can't sand, I'll actually put some transfer tape over the top just to protect it. Otherwise, I just let it sand. I just let it leave the mark. And I just light sanding gets rid of those lines afterwards. So here's the actual end of the laser tube running. You can kind of see the glow there. 
it's a liquid cooled tube. Uh, so the rubber hoses you see there actually have water moving through them. I've got the chiller over here and the slight pink that you see in the fluid is actually uh, an antifreeze, which helps keep the coolant from freezing in the winter because it is a little bit chillier here, thus my winter hat. And it also helps keep any organics from growing in the tube and uh, creating a mess um, and uh, lowering its power. So here's the control panel. You can kind of see the status. It, it'll show you what it's, it's drawn or cut. It has a progress bar at the bottom down here. It shows you the, the runtime so far. We're about halfway through the cut. So this is going to be about four and a half minutes. And then it's also showing you its current coordinates. Uh, never mind the X one. That one is, uh, is way off. Uh, but then it's a temporary file because I sent it straight from the computer showing the max power and the speed. So, again, this is a, uh, a red and black Chinese 60-watt. Uh, original. It, it was labeled as a 60-watt, which is what the power supply is rated at. And they overdrive the original tube to call it a 60-watt, but it actually came with more of a 50-watt tube. Uh, I ended up upgrading. That's why this one sticks out the side of the machine. I upgraded that from a uh, tube from DLM lasers to uh, the uh, uh, RECI tube, uh, which allows me to, to be able to cut up to more quarter inch material, uh, 40 or 50 watt CO2, unless it's really, uh, uh, it, it, it's not a very dense material, a little cut thicker, but on uh, plywood such as this, you really need the 60 watts of power and good air assist to make that uh, cut effectively on larger ones. So as you see, you can't really see the laser beam on these. That's why there's a little bit of danger involved in keeping the door open, the lid open. But uh, plexiglass actually absorbs most lower power CO2 wavelengths. And uh, so uh, standard pair of safety glasses is all you really need. Um, but it's always good to uh, mind and to tool, respect the tool and uh, keep yourself out of harm's way. Now, if we shut the lid, we can still see through the top um, what's going on, and then this plexiglass cover would help prevent any bouncing of light coming out. So we're just finishing up the last piece here. See our graph is getting towards the end of the cut file. And then if all of our settings were correct, we should just lift straight out without any parts sticking in. Get this camera back on the tripod here for you. Okay. Now we can shut the, the air pump and the exhaust off. And moment of truth. Oh, we got just a little bit of a couple areas where it didn't quite cut through. And sometimes in this plywood, that's caused by the, the imperfections in the wood where they have the layers, some extra glue. Um, so your choices are either to rerun it before moving it, cut a new piece, or take it to the jigsaw. So, but that, where all the parts just fall out, that's what you want to see. And you'll see you've got just a little bit of overburn on some of these areas. And that sands right off. So, now we just pick these parts up and uh, clean them out again. So, anyway. That's the laser in quick action. Um, cut a lot of plywood on it, but a lot of balsa. I'll try to show a few more videos of this in the future. Uh, just leave some comments on what you might like to see. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone.